Blue Jays fans, what is up? It is Brendan Panikar here from Jaybird Watching, part of the Stadium Scene Network of Podcasts. Thank you and shout out to Stadium Scene. Doing this emergency pod because a major move has been made, not by the Blue Jays, but by division rival New York Yankees. They have signed and brought back DJ LeMayhew, who is one of the big four free agents uh, that Blue Jays fans are really hoping uh, this team will get, at least one of them. LeMayhew was on their list. Um, and just as a reminder, Trevor Bauer, George Springer, and JT Real Muto uh, make up the other three uh, of the big four free agents. But yeah, that's not going to happen anymore. LeMayhew has re-signed with the Yankees. It's a six-year, $90 million deal. I remember on past episodes of Jay Bird watching with the whole crew with Adam and Craig that we discussed LeMayhew, and I think we were all in agreement. He was option number four of those big four. We all had the other three guys ahead of DJ. And that's because of his age, also because he wants to be paid like a power hitter. Uh, and we even said this last episode, he's not a power hitter. He's benefiting from Yankee Stadium. You take him out of Yankee Stadium and his home runs drop by, I believe it is uh, 50 or 60%. It's significant. Um, it ended up being a six-year deal, $90 million. The AAV on that, 15, if my math is correct, from what I've been reading all over Twitter. Look, that's reasonable. That's a reasonable deal for DJ, but he was not going to come to Toronto on 15 per year. It is reported by Pat Regazzo, I believe his name is, uh, some guy in New York uh, who has sources, and then later confirmed by John Heyman that the, that the Blue Jays were in on the Mayhew to the very end. Uh, I know fans are getting sick of hearing that, but they did offer DJ a good contract, and that's what I really want to talk about before wrapping things up on this quick hit episode. LeMayhew was offered, apparently, four years, $78 million from the Blue Jays. So not quite the price they paid for Hunjin Ryu last year, but really, really close. The AAV on that would have worked out to $19.5 million per year. And look, anything under five years and $20 million per season, I think Blue Jays fans would have been happy with that. Um, it's still, in my mind, an overpay, but that's what you would have had to do to get DJ and lure him away from the New York Yankees. And Look, this is also what we talked about on the last episode of Jay Bird Watching when we chatted about DJ LeMayhew. Is he said at the beginning of the week and his agent that they wanted to go and re-engage teams that were interested. And I think this just confirms what we said on Wednesday night's show. It was purely leverage that LeMayhew and his agent were looking for to make the Yankees be like, okay, we will up our offer. I'm not sure if they up the, the dollar figure, but they definitely up the years to make it a little more palatable for them. And LeMayhew still gets his payday. So yeah, he's off the board. Uh, I'm not upset. Um, the Blue Jays did make a legitimate offer. I think $19.5 million per year for DJ LeMayhew over the next four years for a 32-year-old whose power may go down at the Rogers Center uh, when, when park factors are in, uh, involved uh, is a very fair deal. Just wasn't enough to entice him. And I don't think anybody is going to fault the Blue Jays for not trying a little harder to get DJ. Look, it just puts more pressure on them to finally whether it's upping their offer, doing whatever it is, put pressure on George Springer to sign. And look, it's pressure on this front office too. They said at the beginning of the year this team would get better. Shapiro's quoted two elite players or super high impact players, whatever it is, or four very good players. There's been nothing yet. I know they have Robbie Ray. I know they brought AJ Cole back on the minor league deal. And other Blue Jays news today was that they agreed uh, and settled with uh, Tioscar Hernandez and Ross Stripling uh, avoiding arbitration. Tioscar, I believe, got 4.3 something million, and Ross Stripling got 3 million. Springer's still out there, guys. It's possible. I really hope that this means they will go to George Springer and up their offer, put pressure on him, especially because it looks like the New York Mets are getting close to signing Brad Hand. And Hand probably. I would imagine, gets around $10 million per year. And that just pushes the Mets closer and closer to that luxury threshold that Steve Cohen has said he does not want to go over. If that's the case, Springer's market is shrinking, unless another team comes into the mix, which there hasn't been one reported yet. 
if the Blue Jays come up and offer Springer closer to what he wants. And in my mind, if the Blue Jays went to George Springer right now and said six years, $150 million, $25 million per season, that's $10 more million than the Yankees just paid DJ LeMayhew. And outfield is probably our second biggest need behind a number two starter. How on earth, if you're George Springer, can you turn that down? Of course, that's unless he thinks he can get something better. But in this market, with how slow it has taken to develop, I would have a tough time turning that down if I was George Springer. So we'll see. We'll keep tabs on this over the weekend uh, and into next week when we record on Wednesday with Adam and Craig and myself. Adam is in the driver's seat. He is the host. He'll be talking to Craig and I. Um, And yeah, uh, we'll see what happens. There's going to be some more moving pieces as the weekend goes along. Our deadlines are today. There's still a lot of unsettled cases, including Chris Bryant. Maybe once we know what the dollar figure is for Chris Bryant, he finally gets dealt. I have a feeling teams are waiting to see what that dollar figure comes in at before making any sort of trade for Bryant so that they can appropriately fit him into their contracts and into their payroll. So yeah, lots of moving pieces. Wanted to do this quick hit episode or emergency podcast, whatever you want to talk about, because this one is the first of the big four to fall. And all off season, the Blue Jays have been connected to each of the big four. So yeah, that's Jaber watching quick hit episode with Brendan Panikar. Catch us Wednesday night at 7pm for our next live show. Until then, peace.